He's here. Hey, Governor, how are you? How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you. Thank you. to the five members of the Craig Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, the Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll and I want to welcome everyone here to the office this morning for something that is really, truly special. And I want to begin by thanking our Secretary of Veterans Services, John Santiago, who had the vision for this event and the, and the um, work he did with his team and standing up the Veterans Equality Review Board that we're appointing members to today is really to his credit and we appreciate we said that this is an administration focused on a few things affordability competitiveness and equity and this is an example of how we as an administration and team can move things forward and we're delighted um, we're delighted by today's announcement we're also delighted to be joined by people who are uh, proud veterans themselves um, but also have been such champions for our veterans service members and their families. We begin with Senator John Velas, uh, who has led and sponsored legislation that created this Veterans Equality Review Board and has been here uh, at every step. And so we thank you for your advocacy on this and for your continued work as chair of the Veterans Com uh, Committee. Um, and uh, working alongside you, Representative Jerry Cassidy, thank you so much uh, for all you do in championing our veterans here in Massachusetts. We also have chairs of our LGBTQ caucus, Senator Julian Sear and Representative Jack Lewis, uh, who is here on behalf of Chair Kate Hogan. Uh, thank you all for being here with us today. The legal, advocate, the, the legal advocates who have fought so hard and so successfully for the equality that our LGBTQ service members and veterans deserve uh, we thank them, we thank our veterans, uh, most of all, we thank you for your service and for your courage in standing up for who you are. You made our military and our country stronger. We're here on the 12th anniversary of the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. The repeal of this unjust policy was a significant moment in our nation's journey towards equality, and we celebrate the courageous service members and advocates who made that happen. Today celebrates righting a wrong, but it also marks an occasion to say our work is not done. Our work is not done, and we need to make sure that all of our veterans and all of our LGBTQ veterans in particular uh, today are, are truly honored for their service by making sure that as we go forward, they receive the benefits that they earned and are earning by serving our country. Annabel Reyes is here with us today representing the many thousands of veterans who were treated unjustly, unfairly by our federal government. In 2009, Annabel was forced out of the Navy with a less than honorable discharge simply for acknowledging who she was when asked. Uh, not only that, but she was denied her VA benefits. Today, Annabelle, we say to you and to all LGBTQ plus veterans, your service was honorable in every way. And you conducted yourself with courage, with dignity that epitomizes the values of the United States Armed Forces. So we honor you, we thank you, and we're inspired by you. And we wanna make sure that every veteran in your situation receives the benefits that they so clearly deserve. Yet many years ago, when I was um, a lawyer, people probably don't know this, I was uh, a litigation associate and worked on the challenge to Don't Act, Don't Tell. It was brought on behalf of our clients, the Service Members Legal Defense Network. Some of you may know 
them. We failed, I'm sorry to say. We lost that case. But I remember in litigating that case, coming to know the stories like yours, Annabelle, what you went through, the way you served, your life story, and just being struck at the time at just how incredibly lucky we were to have so many people willing to serve of such caliber and how incredibly cruel and unjust it was for our federal government to have laws that did what they did. And it feels really good now, uh, many, many years later, um, both you know, in my own personal journey, um, being elected, I guess, as the first open lesbian in the country as governor, um, a lot has changed, a lot has changed. Um, but I think back about the stories of, of those clients, and I think about your story, Annabelle, and I just just want to say I'm, I'm just so happy that we are here today. And um, again, I want to thank Secretary Santiago for having the vision to mark this day, to mark this day and what it means, what it means, not just for individual service members and veterans, but also what it means for a broader community, those within the LGBTQ plus community who should know that their government, their state government, their federal government is with them, behind them, and also for everyone out there. Because it's important to mark days and times of discrimination so that we don't forget, so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past as we go forward and we think about laws and policies and do that important work. So we're pleased today, and again, thank you to the legislature for establishing this Veterans Equality Review Board here in the state of Massachusetts, um, the state that's home to marriage equality. It's very befitting that we have this equality review board here in place. And this is a board that is going to make sure that every veteran who received an other than honorable discharge due to don't ask, don't tell can apply for and receive state benefits. Today we will swear in some outstanding folks. The Lieutenant Governor and I just had an opportunity to, to meet you and say hello. Uh, and we thank you for stepping forward in your service, continued service. Dr. Claire Burgess, who is a clinical psychologist in the VA Boston healthcare system and an assistant professor at Harvard Medical School and an LGBTQ plus postdoctoral fellow there. Cliff Brown, who is an Army veteran a veteran outreach coordinator, and served as deputy site manager at the Boston Hope Field Hospital. Lynette Gabrilla, also an Army veteran, director of veteran services for the Wachusett District, and someone who's involved in charitable work. And Dr. Christine Serp, staff psychologist at the VA Boston Healthcare System and assistant professor at Boston University Chibanian and uh, of a city and school of medicine. And finally, Rachel McNeil, a U.S. Army Reserves veteran, veterans advocate, and community organizer. So thanks for all you do. Thanks for the work you do. Thank you for your service. And thank you for the commitment that you're making to veterans and to our state. We are truly grateful and look forward to working with you. And somebody who really looks forward to working with you is our fabulous new Secretary of Veteran Services, Secretary John Santiago. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here on this momentous occasion. Thank you, Governor and the LG, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, for your commitment not just to equity and justice, but to in inclusivity as well. Today is about that what the Healy Driscoll administration has been about are those three principles from the very beginning, whether it's a language access ordinance, a tax package filed, a budget signed, that's what they believe in, that's what we stand for. And to our legislative colleagues, my former colleagues, <laughs> senators and representatives, I count you as friends and allies uh, in the fight for justice, and whether it's putting forth a bill, signing legislation, promulgating certain policies, I count you as friends and allies, and I couldn't be more excited to have you here with us particularly John Vilas, who uh, was the brainchild of this during last year's budget. And to our newest partners in government, Cliff, Claire, Christine, Lynette, and Rachel, thank you for partnering with us, for joining us to honorably serve those who served us. Because our message today is that if you're a veteran out there, 
And if you have an other than uh, honorable discharge because of who you loved or who you were, it's not your fault. Right? As a veteran myself, as someone who served, we know the LGBTQ plus members have served our military from day one. They swore to the same constitution that I did. They've been with me on missions, on deployments. They've been some of the best soldiers that I've served with. And today we honor that. So our message to them, to all those listening, if you were denied benefits because of your discharge status, we're here to rectify that. We're here to give you the benefits that you fought for, that you sacrificed for, and to address some of the shame that you may have felt from Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So it really is an honor to be here, and I'm looking forward to implementing this with our, our new board members. Thank you. Mm, thank you. I'd like to introduce my friend, my colleague, Chairman of the Joint Committee on Veteran Affairs, Senator Vilas. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Secretary, colleagues in government. You know, thinking about this, this what we're here for today, and thinking about don't ask, don't tell, one of the things that was so frustrating and really sad for me is that if you, if you talk to any veteran out there, um, particularly a veteran maybe who has been overseas, the number one pastime, I would argue, when you're not doing whatever you're doing, your mission, is you're sitting around, talking, nothing to do, you can't go anywhere, and then all of a sudden people start talking about their families. People start talking about their loved ones, whatever it may be, their kids, husbands, wives, kids, and whatever it may be, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever. And for the longest time, there was a segment of the population who could not do that. I can think of nothing more morally reprehensible than that. Um, I'm pretty sure that those who have volunteered to serve their nation, when they find themselves in harm's way or not, just serving their country, when they're in those difficult circumstances overseas, I'm pretty sure the enemies of this nation aren't looking at folks any differently. They're looking at that uniform, they're looking at that American flag, and there's no difference between any of us who have taken that oath to serve this country. I'm pretty sure that folks of all sexual orientations, gender identifications, I'm pretty sure we bleed the same color. That's my thought. That's my understanding. When the federal government, to their great credit, in 2021, in the fall, decided that they were going to do something about this, my first response was, whoa, I wonder what's going on in Massachusetts. Do we need to do something like this? So my first conversation was Senate President Spilka. I reached out to Senator Sear, my friends in the chamber, and said, oh my God, we are depriving folks with OTHs, other than honorables, of their benefits. And there's a lot of them. There's a reason that Massachusetts is the best state in the country to be veterans. And my friend here, the Secretary, does such a phenomenal job at maintaining and expanding that. A segment of the population weren't getting those benefits. That is sad. It is despicable, but you want to know what? I'm a firm believer that good government looks at the past, looks at the past and says, you want to know what? That was wrong. That was wrong and we are going to fix it today. That's not flip-flopping. That's not doing any, that is doing what is right. So today, foremost, more than anything, what we're doing here is what is right. And that's a really good thing and a proud thing for all of us to be a part of. So again, to the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary, my colleagues in government, the new board members, congratulations. Um, it's just a blessing to be here. Thank you very much. And I want to bring up my friend, Chair Cassidy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. As, uh, as chair of the uh, Veterans uh, um, Affairs Committee on the House side, I, you know, John Velas is one of the uh, nicest people around, and he always does the right thing. You know, as uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, thank you, uh, uh, Secretary uh, uh, Santiago. Um, we miss him very much in the House, but once, once a House member, always a House member. Um, I just want to say on behalf of the Speaker, the creation of the uh, Veterans uh, Equity Re Review Board provides a beacon of light for individuals who uh, bravely served our country and were wrongfully discriminated against. My good friend Jack, uh, Jack Lewis, I thank you for being here on, on behalf of the House, and uh, Thank you very much.
thank you so much, all of you. And um, now what we're going to do is actually uh, put these folks to work. So if you could, <laughs> if you want to come and just line up here, we're going to swear you in together. You can line up all of our board members. We'll go, we'll go this way. Great, terrific. And gentlemen, if you don't mind, come and be part of this. It's a really, I really appreciate it. Do solemnly swear, swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true, true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. To the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And will support the Constitution thereof. And, and will support the Constitution, the Constitution thereof. thereof. So help me God. So help so me God. God. I state your name. I, I Clifford I Brown. Do solemnly swear and affirm. To solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge, discharge and perform, perform all the duties incumbent upon me. All, all the, the duties, duties incumbent, incumbent upon me. As a member of the Veterans Equality Review Board. As, as a, a member, member of the, the Veterans, Veterans Equality, Equality Review Board, Board. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According, according to, to the, the best of my abilities and understanding. Agreeably. Agreeably. To the rules and regulations of the Constitution. To the, the rules and regulations of the Constitution. And the laws of this Commonwealth. And the, the laws, laws of this Commonwealth. Commonwealth. So help me God. I, I, Clifford Brown, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Congratulations.
Hey, yep. At some point, uh, we need to get